With China controlling over 95% of the market, rare earth metals are becoming increasingly important to the Western world. And this $68 million market cap stock just made a huge discovery at their rare earth project in Brazil. Welcome back to Capital Catalyst. Today we're looking at Aclara Resources, a rare earth metals company. They have two projects, one in Chile and one in Brazil, and today the results of their first drilling campaign in Brazil were announced. The campaign consisted of over 1,700 meters of drilling within 238 drill holes and demonstrated the discovery of a new heavy rare earth element deposit. In the news release, the CEO said Karina's initial exploration results marked a pivotal milestone in their journey to establish Aclara as a leading multi-modular HREE company. Here are the top 10 drill results from the campaign. These drill holes indicate further potential at depth as they reached an average of only 7.5 meters. Rare earth metals have a variety of useful applications and are often found in ND magnets, which are the type of magnets that offer the best performance for both wind turbines and electric motors. As mentioned before, China dominates the rare earth metals market, and the West will have to significantly increase their supply in order to keep up with demand. To speak more about this opportunity and really help us understand the significance of this deposit, we reached out to the CEO and asked him to sit down with us and talk a little bit more about Eclair Resources today. Welcome back to Capital Catalyst. Today, we have the privilege of being joined by the Chief Executive Officer of Eclair Resources, Mr. Ramon Barua. Thanks for joining us today, Mr. Barua. Thank you, Ramon. Thank you very much for inviting me. Absolutely. Uh, we've been looking at Eclara and noticed that today you guys had some exciting news regarding your Kareen module located in Brazil. Would you mind explaining and unpacking this news release and highlighting the main takeaways for investors? Certainly, Armon. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Uh, this is a very important and very exciting news for Aclara. Aclara has a, its its main project is in Chile, in Penco, um, and it's an ionic clay. And uh, I would say probably a year and a half back, we started uh, doing exploration in Brazil, looking also for ionic clays, which we believe is a type of deposit that gives us a competitive advantage. Um, and we were able to identify this, this fantastic uh, a new resource. Since then, we have been drilling in Brazil using a very cheap and very simple method called, called a auger drilling. It's, it's quite superficial, but uh, it has allowed us to very quickly, you know, identify um, a, a very superficial deposit of an ionic clay in Brazil um, that we have announced today. Uh, we are just scratching the surface with the drill holes that we have published uh, this morning, um, and and this gives Aclara significant diversification. I don't know if yeah. what I'm going to say is, is 100% correct, but I think if we're not the only one, we're very, one of the very few ionic uh, clay companies that has deposits now uh, in two different countries. No, and and being in Brazil and Chile offers fantastic diversification for Aclara shareholders. Definitely. And it definitely seems like there's a lot of potential there with those deposits. I was wondering, maybe you're able to share why deposits like these are so important for the future. Uh, and maybe you can share with our audience a little more information about rare earth metals and their future demand as the market kind of advances as well. And maybe compare that to what the current landscape looks like as well. Sure. Let, let, let me start by let me start by answering the first, the more general question: mm. Why are rare earths so important? Yeah. Really, uh, rare earths so far have had a sort of very niche applications. You know, important ones. Uh, in many applications in the uh, medical sector, uh, in the technology sectors, but uh, uh, these applications require very little rare earths. No. And this is a market that has been highly dominated by one player, by, by, by China. What right. is changing now and what's making the outlook very different is uh, the emergence of, of, of electric vehicles. No? We, as a planet, we have an urgency to fight against climate change. This is of utmost importance. And uh, 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 changing our ways in which we mobilize and using more electric vehicles is going to be uh, crucial. Now, for electric vehicles, you need uh, several critical minerals like lithium, nickel, and cobalt that go into the battery. But the energy that is generated or more than generated that is accumulated there then goes to an electric motor that rotates uh, using electromagnetism. 
Rivers act as permanent magnets, same as the magnets that you have probably in your refrigerator. But these are very strong magnets uh, that give special powers to that uh, vehicle. For example, I don't know if you read in Armon in a, in a, in a Tesla. Yes. And, and you feel that acceleration. That acceleration is not due to the battery. It's due to the, to the permanent matter magnets in the motor. Yeah. Uh, so that's 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 the recent importance of these uh, 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 reverse amongst other applications. But I would say these ones and, and and it has a similar effect also on wind turbines that are crucial for generating a, a energy through the wind power. No, it, it, it's also the same principle. Right. Uh, these type of deposits, ionic lace, I emphasize this at the beginning of the interview, are very important because they have three very distinctive characteristics. The first one is that a, a, the metallurgy you know, that you use to extract the rivers is extremely simple. Historically, rivers are produced generating a lot of environmental damage. You know, why? Because you require a lot of energy, a lot of acid, a lot of uh, water. You no, know? And these are products that require also a lot of capital. Mm -hmm. But this ionic, in this ionic clays, uh, nature has done most of the work for us. And, and really, right. you combine these clays with water and ammonium sulfate, which is a very common fertilizer used in agriculture every day, and you extract reverse. So advantage number one is that the metallurgy is very simple. The second advantage is that uh, uh, the rivers contain, rivers are 15 different elements, right? And they come in different concentrations. So it's important that the resource that you have contains those elements that are going to be most useful in electric vehicles and wind turbines. And these ionic lakes have precisely that. Those uh, which are more scarce rivers and more valuable rivers. And third, uh, and, 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 and very importantly as well, uh, also when you find rivers in nature, you find them together with uranium and thorium, which are radioactive materials. In this case, in the ionic lakes, uh, uh, the amounts of, of radioactivity are absolutely negligible. So uh, uh, we can say that the ionic lakes do not have to deal with radioactivity, right? So these three advantages uh, 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 are very special. They are very rare. Most of the deposits in the world of rivers are other types of, of geological formations. Uh, and chi China has um, these ionic lakes. Myanmar also in the southern Chinese border has ionic lakes. But apart from those two countries, it's very scarce eh, 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 and it's very difficult to find ionic lakes. So we're very proud, as I mentioned to you, we're probably the only company in the world that has ionic lakes deposits in two countries, in our case, in Brazil and Chile. Mm -hmm. It's fascinating, really, and it's really a market that I think a lot of people with rare earths haven't given a ton of thought to the application and the potential for it. So um, it's, it's definitely something that is quite futuristic, as you said. Um, one of the things that makes Aclara stand out from other companies in this sector is your patented method, right, for extracting rare earth metals. Uh, I was wondering if you're able to share how this method is kind of revolutionizing the rare earth industry. Thank you, thank you. That that is the question that I enjoy answering more. You no, know? yeah. and, and let, me, let me tell you why. You no, know? because uh, what we're doing. No other mining company in the world can claim what I am about to tell you, okay? Uh, we're going to be extracting rivers without using explosives, yeah? Second, we're not going to be using crushing or milling. In the mining industry, the, stage, uh, the stages which generate most CO2 contamination are precisely crushing and milling. So not, not doing that uh, allows us to have a, an absolutely minimal CO2 footprint. And then uh, our process uses 100% recycled water. And then we, we ourselves recycle the water with 95% efficiency. We recycle the, the fertilizer with 99% efficiency. Mm -hmm. Using a fertilizer as a reagent is already also a, a, a quite important innovation. And that recirculation allows us to have a closed loop so we do not generate uh, any liquid or solid residues. We are the only mining company in the world probably that doesn't have a tailings dam. Um, and, and, and we're going to be producing a rare earth carbonate and the clays, which we didn't crush and we didn't mill, so we didn't change their physical properties. 
were uh, then uh, prepared to return them to the place where we took them. Right. And uh, we're, we are committing to grow a native forest on top of those, uh, on top of those areas. No? Mm. Uh, and we're going to be doing this sequentially. So the mine closure doesn't occur you know, at the end of the life of the mine, but starts occurring cons- a, 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 at the same time at which we are a, a extracting the minerals. So it's very superficial mining, very clean. We use concepts from the circular economy, uh, trying to minimize CO2 footprint. Um, and where we have patented this, this, this process, not only in Chile and in Brazil, but also in the US, uh, in China, in many other places, hmm. uh, in order to protect our, our, our intellectual property. But overall, we are we're extremely proud and, and, and extremely satisfied that we are going to be able to produce these important rivers that are going to help us in the fight against climate change, but we're going to do so also in a very environmentally friendly way. Amazing. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. It, it definitely is early, which means it's just a great lucrative opportunity for investors to get in early, right, before it is recognized by um, all these governments. Thank you for sharing that. We really you know, value your time, Mr. Barua. And we just have one more question um, for you regarding Aclara. If we take a look at rare earth metals in Brazil right now, Aklar comes to mind, and so does Meteoric Resources, which is a competitor, right? And they currently have a $420 million market cap and a very high-grade ionic clay deposit, which you were speaking about. Uh, are there any similarities between this project and your Kareen module that you think can indicate Aclara has the potential to reach a similar market cap in the future? Look, I, I was very, very impressed by the Caldera project. I think they have an amazing resource. Um, and, 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 and I think they're, they're doing a, a very good job in, in presenting uh, their advancements to, to the market. Look, I think, uh, yes, definitely, no. Uh, as I mentioned to you earlier with, with Karina, we're only scratching the surface with this auger drilling that we have completed. Uh, uh, and we're going to go uh, do deeper drilling using reverse circulation uh, drill holes in, in the coming weeks. Uh, uh, so, yes, definitely, we aspire to have a market cap as attractive as, as, as theirs. One thing that, that does differentiate uh, a Clara uh, with Caldera is that we have done a lot of work already in, in Penco, in Chile. Uh, we have developed a, a full metallurgical process and we have built a pilot plant that is currently operating in, in, in southern Chile. And we're going to be sending in the first quarter of next year, we're going to be sending the clays from Carina into the pilot plant in Chile. And that is going to allow us to produce uh, commercial samples that we're going to be sharing, same as we did with Penco, with around 15 different a, a separators in the world. Think, of, think about them as, as refineries of the rare earth concentrate that we're going to be producing. And that puts us a, a step closer to the clients that are going to be using a rare earth to produce the magnets that will go into the electric vehicles. So I think that uh, there's a lot of work that we have done that we can use uh, and that allows us, I would say, uh, a competitive advantage vis-a-vis the commercialization of these rare earths. Yeah, lots of room to grow for sure. Uh, Perfect. What a great place to leave it off, Ramon. That's been uh, episode four of Capital Catalyst with Aclara Resources. Please check out Aclara on the TSX at ARA.TO. Ramon, again, we really, really appreciate your time. Thank you for sharing that with us.